That beautiful gray building in the corner, this is where you'd go to party. The family that lived here were just known for hosting the social events in this city. So you were no one unless you went to their parties. The family consists of one doctor, Leonard Lewis Lalaurie, his wife, Delphine Lalaurie, and their two daughters. This is where the history books get a little gray. Some say they were both her daughters, both his daughters. Actually, they had one each. The history books were also a bit gray on what happened to the first two husbands. Good doctors number three. Now all those doors you see in the ground level, they're left open during these parties because we have a live band set. There's so many people in attendance, that's what enables you to mingle in that the whole. So during one of these parties as you're mingling in and out, now you've all been called to this side of the street, but you've just been made aware of the fire that broke out in their kitchen. See the lamp post in the back? The garage door right next to that. That's where the kitchen was. And somebody in this party is a judge. The judge has been made aware of their concern for the slaves. But also in 1834, the United States Treasury, this is in the ballpark of about $10 million. And the trick is, what they have in their pockets is a little over $3 million. Look at this ratio. Somebody tells me they're concerned about the slaves. I want to help. But honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind is the kind of power I'm going to be butting heads with here. If I insult them, implicate them of some wrongdoing, this is a false accusation, they're going to ruin it easily. But a few of you decide to do the right thing and follow the judge in the carriage way, which is the black gate or the garage. In the back, you find a slave or his door. That door was locked and barred on the outside. So you take the bar down, attempt to kick it in. It's sturdy. So now you're inspired to use this bar as a battering ram. The door is split from the frame. You've been hit in the face with a tremendous stench. A few of you? You're gonna about face and vomit on the carriageway outside. Now you're lucky. That's when the cops arrive. They take over for you. They enter this room, lantern first, realize they had a hard time you know, gaining secure footing on the floor because of the patches of congealed blood all over the place. The first person they find was described by George Washington Cable as having her head treated like an orange. The scalp peeled away, as well as sections of her face, amputated her arms and legs, also removed ribbons of flesh from her torso all the way around. She was alive. Because of the way she's maneuvering herself towards the door by propelling herself with her chin, they said she looks like a caterpillar. The next person they see is a large man nailed to a wall. The face had been split from above the forehead, right above the Adam's apple, ear to ear. They pulled back these quarters of flesh, fish hook them behind his head. Break open the thickest part of the forehead, the cheeks, the sides of the jaw swapped and inverted these bone fragments about, re-stitched his face. Thought he was alive. No, it's merely the maggots in his face that give him animation. Now they're hearing muffled sounds, which were emanating from a small wooden box. That box was described as possibly able to accommodate a medium-sized dog. They didn't shoot the lock like they do in the movies. They broke it open at the frame with their nightsticks. We think that was the right move, because the woman they found in there, her fingers, elbows, shoulders, knees, and hips had all been popped out of joint. These limbs are repositioned at odd angles. This is what has enabled them to cram her into that box. We're never going to know how long she was kept in there, long enough. Because when they did free her, because that configuration she stuck in, once she started moving, they said she resembled a crab. Now, do not forget, you are all on this side of the street, continuing with your party. They brought their band out here to keep you entertained. They've set up tables, dressed in linen, put platters of wine, champagne, and hors d'oeuvres upon them. So to me, this looks like the A-deck of the Titanic out here because they're, they're, they look like they're trying to go down with some kind of style. And that's when they start to bring out all these tortured slaves right in front of you. Okay, if we were to divide the French Quarter into quarters right now, what we happen to be in that quarter where most free people of color were living in at that time. Yeah. We're on the racer's edge of a race ride in this scenario here. We got a mob outside of this house about 400 strong. They're being controlled by two few police for the next 12 hours. And the reason it was taking so long in the first place is because the sheriff was in charge. As soon as it started, drafts a friend from the crowd, slaps the dock in his hand, puts him on a horse, sends him to Baton Rouge. That's where our federal judge was. He needs his signature on that document that he just gave him. Because without that, you can't touch him. He's out of his jurisdiction. Well, at least he was trying. The people who had him in the jurisdiction were evidently too scared to touch him. Before that signature comes, the carriage pulls up, stops outside the black gate, Delphine exits her home. New gown, 
bags of luggage, sets the bags into her carriage, turns this mob and beams a smile. That's what whipped him into a deeper frenzy. They just realized this bitch's audacity of trying to escape. They're now reaching through the police barricades, protecting him, trying to help stop her by grabbing out of the coats and reins, whatever you do. But the driver is up there with a pistol in one hand, whipping the other, lashing everyone's faces, doing his best to keep the crowd back. Now this street today, Governor Nichols, originally Hospital Street, uh, incidentally, that white house on the left, the big black iron gate, that was the hospital. Also, Clay Shaw's home. I don't know if you ever saw the movie JFK, but he was allegedly involved in the Kennedy assassination. Okay. So this carriage is burrowing through the mob, up Hospital Street, they go all the way out to Lake Pond Street, sail on the other side. Ten days later, Mandeville, that's where it was found on their notorious records. Delphine enlists the help of an attorney to liquidate her estate. That paper trail came to a dead end right there. They were never caught. They were never brought to justice for these crimes. So in the hours that follow, the mob is dwindling. The weeks come after that, okay, the locals, if they weren't avoiding this neighborhood altogether, when they walk by, they stayed on this side of the street. It might have been because of the bad smells and the screams emanating from their home weeks after they were gone.